Hey everyone, Jimmy from Lawler Pickups here with a quick tip. Now what we're talking about today isn't quite as glamorous or exciting as a pickup swap, but since pretty much everyone that swaps out their pickups has to remove and replace their strings, it's actually quite applicable. One of the more frustrating issues surrounding string changes is tuning stability. New strings stretch as they break in, and they can even slip out of the tuning machine if they aren't seated well enough. That's what we'll be addressing in this video, how to safely and effectively change, seat, and stretch your guitar strings. Now I know safety hazards probably aren't the first thing to come to mind when changing guitar strings, but there are some precautions to take into consideration. The end of a guitar string is very sharp. It's basically a needle just waiting to stab you. So the first precaution is in regard to unwinding your new strings when you remove them from their packaging. They're typically coiled up and twisted around themselves to hold them in place in the pack. When uncoiling them, start by untwisting the ends to allow them to uncoil. Then be sure to hold them out at arm's length so that they don't bite you when they unfurl. When possible, I like to hold the ball end of the string and either guide or allow the bare end to unwind away from me, like so. The second precaution is to ensure that you don't leave too much of the end sticking out loosely on the tuner, which can poke or slice an unsuspecting finger. If you've played guitar for any length of time, I'm sure you know how painful this can be, especially if they bite one of the fingers on your fretting hand. To decrease your chances of this happening, it's important to cut them as short as possible. Today, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. How to cut the string end extremely short without risking the string slipping out of the tuner completely. It's important to mention a couple of things here that can help ensure a nice, smooth, and pleasantly uneventful string swap. The first is to have your workspace and tools prepared. This includes having your new strings open and ready to go. I also like to have the tuners lined up parallel with one another, straight up and down, to provide plenty of room between them to turn the adjacent tuner. I also like to have my tuning post holes lined up just off from parallel to the neck itself, to the inside, sort of like this. Here's the next parallel. I like to have the holes right about there at about a 45 degree angle. This helps me to get the string threaded through without binding or bending, but it also provides the little bit of resistance on the string that I like to have when winding the string around it and tensioning it up. As for tools, really the most important one is your string cutters. Any set of wire cutters, trimmers, or clippers should do just fine with guitar strings. Optionally, you can also use a string winder, which makes turning the tuning machines a whole lot easier and faster. Also, a tuner. Since I'm only changing a single string today for demonstrational purposes, I'm not that concerned with the tuner, but I definitely like to have one on hand if I'm changing all six strings so I can make sure to get the reference pitch correct. The second thing to keep in mind is that once you've begun threading the string onto the instrument, make sure you keep tension on it at all times. This is to help avoid it from unwinding or flopping around on the instrument. I keep tension on it like this. Holding it with my right thumb, middle, ring, and pinky finger, I gently pull up, while at the same time with my right pointer finger, pressing down. What this allows me to do is alter the amount of tension by rotating my arm up and down. So as the string gets tighter and tighter, I simply rock my arm down to accommodate the additional tension on the string. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to remove the old string. Simply reduce tension on the string by giving the tuning machine a few turns. And once I've removed tension from the string, I like to cut the end that's wrapped around the tuner so that unstringing it's a little cleaner, a little easier, and I also reduce the likelihood of an errant string end flopping around and scratching the finish on the instrument. Now that the end is cut off and removed, I can just pull the remaining length of string out through the saddle and or bridge. Next, I'll unwind the new string, again holding it away from my face as it unfurls. You'll want to make sure to check the new string to make sure that there are no sharp bends or kinks in the string as they can become weak points under tension and the string will almost inevitably break at any point where the string has been bent or kinked. The string looks good, so I'll feed it through the bridge and saddle, making sure that the ball end is seated firmly into the bridge. The same goes for guitars with string through bodies. You want to see to it that the ball end is sitting all the way into the ferrule. If it isn't, it could get hung up when tensioning the string, potentially damaging the string or even the instrument itself. With the string inserted into the body end of its traverse, we can thread it into the tuning machine. Again, I like to have the tuning post hole lined up just off from parallel to the neck to the inside. The most common issue with restringing a guitar is, as I said earlier, tuning stability. Tuning issues resulting from string changes almost always stem from either the strings stretching or from the strings slipping out of the tuner. Unfortunately, there's no getting around string stretching, which is an unavoidable byproduct of the task. But it can be mitigated to some degree by not putting too much string around the tuning machine post. 
String slippage, on the other hand, is totally avoidable and can be prevented by ensuring that you're not putting too little length of string around the tuner post. The best way to avoid these pitfalls is to measure the amount of string slack that you have on the string prior to tensioning it. How's this done? How can you measure the string length beforehand? Simple, I'll show you. The way I like to do this is to use the guitar's nut and frets as a guide. Some folks prefer to use the tuners as their guide, but some guitars have wildly different headstock designs or no headstocks at all. Steinberger, I'm looking in your general direction. So this may not always be a dependable way to ensure that the measurements are close enough to be effective. However, I've yet to encounter a guitar in which measuring using the nut and frets didn't do the trick. To measure, I'll pull the string taut, holding it tightly with my left thumb and forefinger just on the back side of the tuning post. Then, with my right hand, I'll pinch the string between my thumb and middle finger just above the first fret. Then, using my right pointer finger at the nut as the base of my measurement, I'll slightly loosen my grip with my left hand and pull my right hand back toward the body until my pointer finger is somewhere around the first fret. This is all the string you'll need to have around the post to ensure that there's a good secure hold without having too much or too little string, preventing both slipping and excess stretching. Now something to remember, plain strings are far more likely to slip than wound strings, so you may need to give it a little bit extra string on there. But really we're talking a difference of maybe in front of the first fret to behind the first fret. Really either should be fine with either wound or plain strings, but I'll give it a little bit extra just to be safe. Now I'm going to show you a method that I've learned for securing the end of the string to ensure a firm hold. This method relies on the hourglass shape of most modern tuning machine pegs. It uses one turn above the portion of the string that passes through and the rest of the turns below. This causes the top wind to press down onto the excess string and the bottom winds press up, acting like a clamp to hold it tight under its own tension. To do this, simply continue holding the excess string on the far side of the post with your left thumb and pointer finger while using your right hand to make an outward bend in the string on the near side of the post. That means for tuners on the bass side of the guitar, you'll bend the string toward yourself. For tuners on the treble side of the guitar, you'll bend it away from yourself, like so. Next, while still holding the string firmly with my left hand, I'll use my right thumb and pointer finger to wind the string around the top of the post. You'll go clockwise for strings on the bass side of the headstock and counterclockwise for strings on the treble side of the headstock. Now that the string has begun to be wound, remember, it's important to keep tension on the string at all times. So now I've got my first turn of string around the post, the turn above the excess string. It's time to wind the rest of the slack up beneath the excess string by holding tension with my right hand and turning the tuning machine head with my left. In order to get this excess string out of my way, I'm just going to bend it straight up. I'll keep tightening until there's enough tension on it to keep it secure on its own. Usually this is when the string pulls my right hand fingers almost all the way down to the fretboard. To help lock it in, I'll tug the string with my right hand by pressing my thumb on the fretboard while pulling up slightly with the rest of my fingers on my right hand. As to further avoid the string slipping out of the tuner, I don't like to trim the excess until I'm sure that the strings have been seated, stretched, and tuned to pitch. Usually I'll wait until I'm finished with all of the strings and then just trim all the excess all at the same time. The cool thing about this method is, since it uses the string's own tension to hold it steady, it's easy to undo the next time you change your strings. It'll hold fast so long as the string is kept under tension, but you don't have to untie any knots or recite any secret codes to unlock the string. As soon as you relieve the tension by loosening the string, it allows itself to be unwound from the post very easily. Now that I'm done changing the string, it's time to stretch it and get it tuned to pitch. Like I mentioned before, there's no way around the inevitable stretching of strings, but this method will help you get through that without undue frustration of excess stretching and slipping. I like to tug on the strings pretty vigorously to really seat and stretch them before tuning. As previously mentioned, keeping tension on the string during the swap goes a long way to help with this, since it prevents slack from building up in the length of the string wrapped around the tuner post. And again, to avoid the risk of being snapped or stabbed by the string if it should happen to break while stretching, I like to keep my face back and secure the strings in the place most likely to break. That would be the headstock near the tuning peg or nut, and at the body near the saddle or tailpiece. How do I stretch the strings? Simple, I just yank on them. Blocking the string at the headstock and the bridge as mentioned before, and keeping my face as far back as possible, I use my right hand to tug on the string vertically and horizontally. Once I've tugged on it a few times like that, I feel it's pretty well seated around the tuning machine peg, and so now it's time to stretch the string up and down the length. To do this, I again place my thumb into the fretboard while pulling up with my four other fingers, and then using my thumb up and down the fretboard on the string, I'll fret the note while stretching. 
So now all there is to do is tune it up to pitch and trim the excess off the end. When trimming the excess string, it's a good idea to clip it as close as possible to avoid leaving any length that could catch your fingers. Simply bend the string back out, get your clippers as close as possible, and that's pretty much it. Just stretch, tune, and repeat until the strings seem to be holding tune relatively well. Then, with a little playing and hopefully minimal tuning, you should be good to go. Obviously, this video doesn't address all string swap scenarios, such as vintage Fender-style tuning machines, locking tuners, or locking trim systems, but it covers the basics for majority of players. So we hope it's proven to be informative and helpful for you. If you want to stay up to date on what we've got going on with product news, demos, tutorials, and more, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never have to miss any of our future content. Thanks again for tuning in and take care.